But I think she's really starting to understand all the different things she's done in this sport. She said, listen, I might not be the strongest. I might not have held that belt, but I have certainly been a pioneer and I've done so much in mixed martial arts. There is no overstating just how much she has meant to the women's game and all she has done. This was a night she has dreamt about for years and years. And after 25 professional fights, Roxanne Modafferi is walking to the octagon. When I first fought in the UFC, it was on the Tough 18 finale, and I believe 2013, and I faced Raquel Pennington in, at bantamweight. I knew it was my big chance. You know, I had lost in the house, and I knew that if I beat Raquel, I would be able to get signed to the UFC, and that was what I wanted. That was, you know, I'd moved back from Japan to America for that chance. Like, I quit my job. I wasn't even guaranteed the finale fight, but I, that was my dream to fight in the UFC. So I, I quit, I moved back. I trained at Syndicate MMA with John Wood for like three months and I fought and I was like, dang it, I lost. I lost my decision. You know, I wasn't very impressed with myself and I, I kind of thought that I shouldn't have been signed. You know, my striking wasn't super awesome compared to my peers and um, it was a big disappointment, but I tried to keep my chin up and I got signed to Invicta and I worked more with John Wood. He does amazing things for fighters. Um, kept fighting and then I was able to make my second UFC, UFC debut, so to speak, for Tough 26 against Nico. And that was another amazing opportunity for me. Similar stakes almost, like I was in the Ultimate Fighter 26 and it was like almost a surprise title shot. Like my goal, my dream in life was to fight for the UFC, not necessarily get the title. Uh, up until then, the uh, UFC didn't have flyweights. You know, I felt very undersized at bantamweight, but that was like my only option. So I was like, man, like I forget how old I was, like 35 or mid 30s or something. Like, should I go to Bellator? Should I go to some other organization, stay in Invicta? Like, what should I do? Like, I really want the UFC. So then I fought Nico, and that was a very epic, epic fight for me. I'm very bummed that I, I lost. I thought it was very close, but I think it was one of my best performances, and I'm very proud of that fight. My first win in the UFC, other than the Ultimate Fighter, was against Barb Honchak, and that fight meant so much to me. Um, I had fought her seven years prior, and she beat me with a rear naked choke, and I almost never get submitted, submitted like in, my almost 50 fights, I think I've gotten submitted four times or something like that. So I was like, oh man, she got me. And I was supposed to win that fight. Um, so I was, you know, it was kind of looming over me and I knew she was the Invicta champion and I really wanted that win. You know, so I, of course I trained hard for it. Roxanne Monteferi, the happy warrior will smile big tonight. And just to be able to overcome that and beat her with a finish just was one of my favorite wins of all time. Fighting Antonina Shevchenko in Russia was an incredible experience. I honestly was a little nervous to go to Russia, just the completely different culture, and I don't know, it was intimidating. Um, but I, I took the trip with Mike Pyle, one of my coaches, and then my head coach John Wood followed later. It was fun to be there, and then the actual fight was incredible. I just felt like that was one of the best examples of everything I trained actually happened in the fight. Like all the cage work that I've been do I had been doing, uh, came to fruition, I was able to do exactly what I wanted. It was just such a cool feeling to be able to go that all that way and then get the win and go home with it. The happy warrior, Mother Perry! Uh, the crowd reception in Russia was, I wasn't really paying attention when I was fighting, honestly. Like, I assumed they'd all be cheering for her. Um, and I think I was right. Spasiba, St. Petersburg! Spasiba! And then I tried to memorize some words in Russian, like "spasiba," thank you. Um, and so I said like a, my little lines afterwards, and then I got a bunch of claps and cheers. So that was cool. When I was offered Macy Barber as an opponent, it became something that I hadn't really expected it to become. You know, I, I always say yes to everybody. I, you know, fight to fight. I'm just so excited to fight in the UFC. I was like, yeah, Macy Barber, cool, whoever. Like, let's go. So I trained, and then we fought, and um, I came away with the win. Uh, leading up to the fight, I mean, I'm never the stronger fighter. I'm always the underdog. I think there's only been like a couple times in my 50 fight career where I haven't been the underdog. So it didn't really intimidate me because I'm just used to it. Like whoever, I'll fight whoever. And then when I came away with the win, I got like dozens and dozens of fans thanking me and sending me pictures of their 
betting tickets that I made them like thousands of dollars because I won. I was like, okay, cool. I'm pretty happy too. Uh, when Macy took the mic, um, you know, she said what she said kind of before me. You know, I just want to say, first of all, that it's an honor to be on this card. I thought that was very odd. I was like, oh, is she allowed to do that? Um, but I didn't really care too much at the time. I mean, like I said, I don't really pay attention to these things. I'm like, yeah, let's fight in the UFC. This is so cool. But um, yeah, then like my friends and fans were all like super mad for me, even more than I was. But whatever. <laughs> My rematch with Andrea Lee was a tough fight. Um, I fought her first in Invicta and I came off with the win. And then again in the UFC. And that win meant a lot to me uh, for many reasons. One was that I knew she had improved since we last fought. And I was like, man, like I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to fight her again because I know she's improved, especially her ground game, which is kind of how I won the last time. But that's fine, I'll do it anyway. The fight before that was Lauren Murphy. And that was a tough fight, like for a lot of reasons. I, during my fight camp, I had COVID. I had like a major injury that I overcame. And then one of my favorite coaches moved away. So I was like, oh, like I was so depressed over that. And I, I had just gotten back to the gym when I got the fight offer. And I was like, oh, you got another fight offer. And my coach was like, good for you, go do it. So it was like, I pulled myself together and got right into that training camp. And it was really cool that I got the, the win. Honestly, I think leading up to this fight, I'm going to feel a lot of pressure. I feel pressure now when I think about it, you know, I don't, I hate to think of like, this is your last chance ever. Like one of my co coaches said that a couple times to like inspire me and I was like, stress me out. Um, so I'm just going to try to think of it as just another fight. Um, but it's not, you know, it's my last fight. It's my 50th fight but I've really accomplished my dream. Like my dream wasn't to become champion, it was to fight in the UFC. Like I was a 21 year old kid and with this dream. So now that I was finally able to, you know, quit my job and make a living off of my fight money for a while, like it's just such a dream come true. And I'm gonna try to find a balance of enjoying the moment, but also like being focused, like I gotta, have like Mortal Kombat with this human over there. But you know, it's my last one, so I, I think I'll feel a little pressure, but it's cool. I, I like Casey, you know, as an opponent. Like, I think we're kind of similar in our charge forward style. Um, yeah, it's gonna be an honor to fight her. You know, she's young, let's do it.